there, and welcome to the latest in our look at the constellations. Today we're going to look at Corvus the Crow. Now Corvus is located in the southern sky, but it is visible from northern latitudes uh, during the late winter months and the early spring. Its name means crow or raven in Latin, and it represents Apollo's sacred bird in Greek mythology. It doesn't contain many bright stars or deep sky objects, nor does it look anything like a crow. In fact, it looks like a box someone sat on. Stars-wise, Gyna, or Gamma Corvi, is the brightest star. It has an apparent magnitude of 2.59 and is about 165 light years away. Beta Corvi, or Kras, is a yellow giant star, about 140 light years away, and its magnitude varies between 2.6 and 2.66, not very much. Algarab, or Delta Corvi, is 87 light years away, and it has a magnitude of 3.1. And Minkar, Epsilon Corvi, has a visual magnitude of 3.02, and is about 300 light years away. Deep sky-wise, one thing is in Corvus, the famous antenna galaxies. Now, although they don't have a Messier number, uh, their catalogue number is NGC 40, 38 and NGC 4039, they're a well-known pair of interacting galaxies. They're known as the antenna because of the long tail of stars coming out from these galaxies as they collide, looking a bit like an insect's antennae. And the nuclear of the two galaxies are joining to become one giant galaxy. Most galaxies seem to do this. At some point, of course, our Milky Way will collide with Andromeda about 8 billion years from now. And they're one of the most spectacular Hubble images. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little look at Corvus the Crow. Stay safe, dark skies. Speak to you next time. Bye for now.